Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Los Panos Talk. My name is Justin Collins. Well, you asked for it, and here it is. I asked the people, hey, would you like me to make a opinion piece video on how our local governments use the Brown Act as a shield to avoid being transparent with us and to keep a lot of things that they probably shouldn't secret. And I'll be getting into all of that in just a moment, right after a brief message from our sponsor. And we're back. Thanks for watching. So I'm not going to go into the full detail of exactly what the Brown Act is, but basically what the idea was is that it would give us more transparency with government. The whole idea behind the Brown Act is that a majority or what's called a quorum of a legislative body cannot discuss things except for within a meeting. So in other words, on our city council, for instance, there's five people. So three people or more cannot have a secret discussion or talk about things related to legislative acts, etc. of the council. In other words, this would be considered a meeting. And then if it's a three person or more, it would need to be public, right? We would need to have access to it like any other meeting. The whole idea was... This would prevent councils, school boards, and other legislative bodies from deciding on things in secret and then showing up to the meeting and then voting on a matter that they've already determined prior to the meeting, having secret knowledge of each other's decisions before they make the real decision, giving us the illusion that something was voted on uh, unanimously or whatever, but really all the decision making was done behind the scenes. The idea of the Brown Hack was to avoid this very scenario and, of course, was named after a person named Brown who did just what I described. But that's pretty much the nuts and bolts of it, that these meetings need to be public and that you can't have a quorum of people discussing something. You also can't have what's called a serial meeting, meaning if we pretend that I'm on the council and I talk with someone else who then talks to someone else on the council and then that person talks to someone else who then talks to someone else on the council about a matter. So we use intermediary people that in that case, we've had what's called a serial meeting. And then we've just violated the Brown Act. So that's what the Brown Act is. It was designed so that discussions from our city council or say our school board are meant to be had in public where we can all see. And they're not allowed to discuss matters that they're going to vote on except for in these public meeting settings. And so theoretically, when we come to the meeting, that's supposed to be the first time that they sat down and talked about an issue and voted on it. But here's where it comes into being as a bunch of crap. Constantly, you'll hear uh, members of our various legislative bodies and staffers, especially staffers within our city government, et cetera, that will warn our councilmen and warn our school board members to not even talk to their constituents about things because the potential that the constituent might talk to someone else and then maybe even someone else and have a serial meeting. And what this has turned into is, is that when our council members don't want to talk to you about something, they'll say, oh, I can't talk to you about that because of the Brown Act. And I'm worried I might violate the Brown Act. So it's turned into an excuse to not talk to you. And that's a load of crap because it's not what it was intended to be or do. And here's the other thing. It's extremely annoying and frustrating 
that our staff, et cetera, would go to such extremes to scare council members about the Brown Act, because I'll tell you a fun fact about the Brown Act. In the history of the Brown Act, no one has ever been prosecuted or even brought upon formally of charges of the Brown Act. That's right. It has never actually been used. There has been times where people have been caught red-handed. In fact, there was a time not long ago, a few years ago, where there was an email literally containing a majority of the board members on it. Tommy Jones was on that email as well as, as others currently sitting on the board today. That was literally a violation of the Brown Act that was actually on black and white paper, and it got submitted. And you know what happened with it? Nothing. Absolutely nothing happened. So here's the truth. The Brown Act uh, gets violated all the time. It has to, frankly. Uh, someone could talk to you, right? And then you end up talking to another councilman, or maybe maybe you call them all and you complain about something, as is your right to do, and I encourage you to do that. Well, technically, if, if you convey what someone else told you, another councilman, you've forced them, you've accidentally caused them to break or violate the Brown Act. But should they get in trouble for that? Absolutely not. And neither should you or anybody else. And the Brown Act doesn't apply to you as the citizen. It just applies to them. But here's the thing. We all know darn good and well that no one's actually going to be in trouble. No one's actually going to press it anywhere. It's not going to go anywhere. So why does it keep being brought up all the time as this boogeyman luring over and, and watching all these meetings? It's because it's become a really convenient excuse to not talk to you and a very uh, convenient way to justify not making all meetings public. I'll give you an example. I wanted to tell you a lot more about these dealings between the school district and our city council. They're in talks and discussion about the idea of potentially creating a public pool, combining resources and getting something done like that for our community. Wonderful, great. I can't tell you much about it, and here's why. Because they held a meeting and where they had less of a quorum from the school district and less than a quorum from the council, so two members from the council and, and only uh, three from the uh, board, but I believe they brought two. And to make a long story short, they talked about this, among many other things, but the problem is, is we know no information about it. Why? Well, because while they tell me that this was a public meeting, uh, the truth is, is that it wasn't recorded. You can't go watch it. There are minutes to it, but they won't be released until they're approved at the next meeting. So that wouldn't be till December. There was no way for you to attend. They didn't open it to the public. And yet somehow this was a public meeting. And I called them out on it saying, you know, I can't look at any of the stuff you guys have decided or talked about, about this, you know, pool because, you know, this was basically a closed session meeting. And they were like, whoa, whoa, it's not a closed session meeting. It was a public meeting. And I'm like, really? Well, I wasn't allowed to attend. There's no recording of it for me to watch. And I don't even have minutes from it. So explain to me how that's a public meeting. And they can't. And the truth is, is that that meeting really was illegal in the way that it was conducted. Now, they'll deny that and tell you otherwise. But as of the rules that came out October 1st, we were supposed to be given a link and how to attend. It was supposed to be recorded and some other things. But they're hiding behind the Brown Act, this idea that, well, it wasn't technically a quorum on either side. So technically speaking, it, it, it didn't require these requirements. But see, that's the thing. They can hide behind the Brown Act. All they've got to do is put less than a quorum of uh, council members on something, go off and pretty much decide that and then basically come back and report to everyone. And what happens is, is that decisions are being thought of. And during the brainstorming phrase, you and I are given no information about it. It's kind of like when the city manager was decided on. I'm not disagreeing with the outcome or the decision, but the process was basically like watching the Pope being selected from the Vatican. We had no information, no idea what was going on, how they were selecting it or anything like that. And the thing is, is that I get that there's personnel problems, but when it comes down to it, there's two ways our government could be. 
A, they could say, we want to be completely transparent, give you all the information that we can, and only withhold from you information that we literally cannot legally share with you. That would be option A. But then there's option B, the latter option, and the option that our city government and local governments take. We are going to withhold all information from you, except for the information that we legally must show you. That is the option that our local governments take. There's two ways to look at it, but ours takes the latter every single time. They even use the Brown Act to game it, create less than quorums, so they literally don't have to show you what they're talking about. And here's why it's such a problem, because by the time you learn about it, by the time it actually gets to the meeting, decisions were pretty much already made. It's too late for really any kind of changes or discussion. And you're learning about it at the very final last step. And there's no time for you to participate in that process. It's not very democratic. And we all know the classic saying that knowledge is power, and it's true. And if I keep information away from you, and so much so that you're now dependent on me for that information, and you don't know what's going on, so you really can't actually make a well-informed statement. So you can make your public comment a whole day long. But if you don't really know what was in the background or behind the scenes and discussions on these things or these closed session meetings, more or less, then whatever you're going to say, you're probably going to bring up things that were already talked about, already discussed. But this wouldn't happen if you were really allowed to be part of that process. And it begs the question, what do they gain from making a meeting like this secret or any other meeting? And I found out that there's actually lots of meetings that you and I aren't invited to. Uh, they're not really out there for us to see. And yet they happen and they involve things that actually matter and reflect uh, what you and I care about. So, uh, you know, and, and I've called them out on this and they've said, well, you know, we don't make decisions at those meetings. And we just really brainstorm and talk about things you know, like maybe making a public pool or talk about streets or talk about public safety stuff. And it's like, well, you know, dude, that does matter to us. That's exactly the kind of things that we want to hear you're discussing about. And we have a right, it shouldn't be a privilege, a right to know about those discussions and to hear them because we have a representative form of democracy. We don't really live in a democracy. We live in a republic. We elect people who then represent us. So it's in our best interest to know how those people represent us at these meetings. Do they speak? Do they just sit there and suck up oxygen? Do they actually voice opinions we care about? Are they just concerned about speaking and have no backbone? Do they actually convey what we want to hear? Do they bring up things that you and I would want them to bring up? We should have information like that, but we don't. What we get is at the final last step, all of them voting on it. And by then there's no comments, right? There's really no discussion because it was really already decided, right? So that's my problem with the way that our local government is run. And that's my problem with how the Brown Act is being used as a shield and as a tool to keep information away from you. It was designed to do literally the opposite. It was designed to give us transparent government. And all it's done is given us a government that finds loopholes and excuses to not tell you stuff. Like I said, this was an opinion piece, so take it how you will. But that's my opinion, and don't ask me to apologize for it. If you found this information useful or would like more information like this, then please subscribe to LosPanosTalk.com and get all of it sent directly to your email, and you don't have to be reliant anymore on the Facebook algorithm or Instagram newsfeed. Once again, my name is Justin Collins, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Mm -hmm.